repeat the question, though. The expectation having been, uh, having been raised in the public mind, can you reverse this process where government is expected to produce the happy result? Oh, no way. And it would be very foolish of the public, which is on the whole more sensible than uh, academics, to, uh, to come to this conclusion. They look around them. What do they see? They see a whole collection of visible hands attached to Exxon, other large corporations. These are not small, independent competitors jostling with each other for uh, the patronage of the public. These are large organizations with substantial influence on their markets. Government's interference, clumsy as it often is, is an almost unavoidable response to the very visible manipulations of large organizations. If there's, uh, again, you're an academic, we're talking about fact and history. Now, the history is that the growth of government has not been as a result of the things you're pointing out. It isn't the large corporations, it isn't the large unions, it isn't the technological development that has produced the major growth of government. The major growth of government in our time has come in the redistributive area. It's come in the area of designing programs which take from some people and give to others. We're not going to go into those here because we discuss those in our next two programs which deal with exactly the question of whether the government intervention that was stimulated by the Great Depression has been a success or a failure. But to your point, the grounds that you give for greater government intervention have almost nothing whatsoever to do with the actual factual growth of government. Now at the end of the war, immediately after World War II, it was thought that government was going to get involved, especially in Britain, in France, in central economic planning Partly on a large scale. Partly because of the war experience, too, when government Partly. was very much involved. And in the Germany and Japan as well. Germany and Japan as well. That yeah. is a war. Mm. Created a myth just as the, as the uh, Great Depression or created Or rather reinforced the myth of government uh, responsibility. Yes, but it created a different myth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, this is a subject we don't discuss much in the film. We've discussed it in a book that we're bringing out with the same title to go along with the book. But, <laughs> but, the great, but the great myth that was created by the war was a myth that government was efficient. And it was, for war. wartime purposes, mm -hmm. in, at least in, in Britain and the United mm -hmm. States. It wasn't so efficient in Germany and the losing countries. But why was that a myth? It was a myth because it is one thing for government to plan and to control an economy for a single overriding objective, a si one solitary objective, win the war. It's a very different thing for government to control the economy for the many numerous tastes of all of us of a very large number of people in a complex world. And I, you ask the question of whether people's opinions can be changed. Yes. I can't change their opinions, you can't change their opinions, but experience is changing their opinions. Is there anybody anywhere now who believes that government is an efficient way to run an industrial enterprise. I think